companies have to have said, okay, that quarter was past us, but now here's our outlook going forward, and we're going to perform. Where do companies need to come in? How good do the numbers need to be, Michael? The numbers need to be very good. People are very skeptical. We're on a huge uptick in the markets. Like you said, we're up eight straight days, up 17%, coming off a terrible December. But we all forget real quickly. And so people are starting to say, okay, is this real? Is this going to last? Are companies really performing? Or was this just now it's over? Well, what do you think? I think, I think companies are performing. I really believe the political overhang that's been hanging over our heads is moving away. The jobs market looks pretty good. The, the labor numbers came in last week uh, positive. And I think you're seeing companies rotate from the high growth, high earnings mm -hmm. potential to high earnings companies that now need to perform. So, yeah, because so much of this run has been what they call multiple expansion. In other words, yeah. prices for the stocks have gone up, but their expectations so far have not gone up. So in other words, the valuations rise, which means investors are betting on good things. We better get it. They are betting on good things. And I think the Fed is betting on good things. The way they, the way they raised rates and they said, oh, wait, we better stop. Let's, let's see what happens now. Uh, they're betting on good things to come. Are they betting on good things or bad things? Because they, now they're talking about maybe cutting rates, which well, I should think, make people nervous a little bit, shouldn't it? Well, they got nervous that they raised rates too fast. And I think we, we aren't quite out of what happened in December. I mean, it was a terrible market. We also don't know what the tax overhaul is going to have effect on. So these companies that are reporting now, you'll see the tax overhaul, overhaul start to give them benefit or be meaningless. So the, the inverted yield curve, at least as far as three month to 10 year, was brief, okay, a cup of coffee, but it was there and it happened and it worried people. The Fed, some people talking in the government, we need a rate cut. That doesn't imply to you, Michael, that we have an imminent recession. Maybe that means an overshoot by the Fed and maybe some technical move in bonds, which caused that inversion, but it's not a red flag for an imminent slowdown. No, I don't think it's a red flag at all. That's I mean, the universal sign for red flag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a slow. I don't think it's a red flag for a slowdown. I think they're just trying to get the rates right. We had a change in administra administration. We also had a huge geopolitical overhang where the tariffs and everything that was happening between the U.S. and China was killing the economy. And I think it's. I think we're getting past that, and we're going to refocus on earnings now. If the earnings don't come in well, look out. Okay, leave us quickly with some ideas for our viewers. What looks good to you and? Your clients right now? I like the banking sector. I mean, it, it, it has underperformed. Uh, you haven't seen it perform uh, up to the potential. They're making tons of money. The cash is coming in. But I also like value technology. Companies what that. What does that mean, value technology? It's not the high it's like flying. Jumbo shrimp. Sounds like an oxymoron, you know? <laughs> it, it is. The high, flying, the high flying days are over of the high earning, uh, low earnings, high growth. Let's focus, refocus on earnings. I mean, Apple's trading it. 16 times. Microsoft has the cloud technology. A lot of these companies people forgot about are leading what happens in this, I think, is the largest technological boom in our lifetime. And we're going to look back on this 300 years, 400 years later, say, yeah. wow.